this is their idea of Christmas, I gotta be here for New Year's. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies that are debatably Christmas movies. Oh, see, I made Lewis a bet here. You Lewis bet me that we couldn't both get rich and put you on the poor house at the same time. You didn't think we could do it. I won. For this list, we're looking at those films that are set during the holiday season, but leave us questioning how much Christmas spirit they really have. It could be that Christmas doesn't play a huge role in the plot, or that the movie is lacking in the holiday's traditional symbolism. Either way, these films are the perfect counterpoint to the same old batch of seasonal favorites. What movie do you think should be considered a Christmas movie? Let us know in the comments down below. Number 10. Carol While some holiday movies are all in on spreading Christmas cheer, Carol is a film that understands just how lonely of a time it can be. Do you know much about train sets? I do, actually, and we just got a new model in last week. It's hand-built with hand-painted cars. After all, Christmas may have its yearly pleasures, but it's not as if the holiday lasts forever. The same can be said of the sparks that fly between aspiring photographer Therese and upper-class divorcee Carol in this Todd Haynes-directed drama. Well, I have a friend who told me I should be more interested in humans. <laughs> and how's that going? It's going well, actually. The chemistry between Rooney Mara and Kate Blanchett is as rich as a mug of hot chocolate in front of a roaring fire. I always spend New Year's alone in crowds. I'm not alone this year. Within their all too brief holiday fling, the two directionless women find something in their lives to count on. And if there's one thing we can all count on ourselves, it's Christmas. Wow, that's that. So. Number 9. Lethal Weapon Normally, when a movie opens with Jingle Bell Rock, you expect a bright display of Christmas decorations amidst a family gathering. But things take a hard right turn when a Christmas tree lot becomes the setting for a police shootout in the opening moments of this classic buddy cop film. Okay, pal. Hey, nose is in the dirt, asshole. It's true that Lethal Weapon may not have the holiday's usual festivities on its mind. What day is it? What day? God damn Christmas! However, this first team-up between the iconic Riggs and Murtaugh sees the two undergoing significant changes akin to George Bailey in It's a Wonderful Life. Are you really crazy? Or are you as good as you say you are? You're gonna have to trust me. Riggs in particular learns the value of redemption when his partner gives him a new lease on life after his wife's death. So you could say this movie has a family gathering after all. If you think I'm gonna eat the world's lousiest Christmas turkey by myself, you're crazy. I'll tell you a little secret. What? I'm not crazy. Number 8. Edward Scissorhands Leave it to director Tim Burton to set one of his most iconic outsider stories during a time of year when everyone's meant to be together. What happened to you? I'm not finished. Oh! Put those down. Don't come any closer. Just please. Edward Scissorhands was arguably the first film to introduce audiences to Burton's affinity for the holidays. And it certainly wasn't the last. On Christmas Day in the morning. It centers around the titular protagonist as he's introduced to suburbia by the Boggs family. Though his flair for topiary and ice sculpting earns him the love of the Boggs' daughter Kim, few are able to see past his foreboding exterior. Edward, I was so afraid. I thought you were dead. It all culminates one heartbreaking Christmas night when he's chased out of town, deprived of the good tidings and great joy he always deserved. But hey, at least we now know why it snows. Number 7. Black Christmas Hey, quiet! It's him again! The Mona! Bob Clark is perhaps best known for directing one of the greatest holiday films of all time in 1983's A Christmas Story. But almost a decade beforehand, he gave birth to an entirely new subgenre with this groundbreaking slasher film. Black Christmas follows a group of sorority sisters who are stalked by a serial killer during their winter break. What starts out as a series of suggestive phone calls soon evolves into a deadly game of cat and mouse. Jazz. Crying jazz for me. What are you yelling about? 
Suddenly, this silent night erupts with cries for help that never comes. While Black Christmas has never truly risen above its cult status, it would go on to influence classics like Halloween, while also inspiring future holiday-themed horror films like Krampus. Agnes, Agnes, don't you tell what we did, Agnes. Number 6. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang After crafting a name for himself with his script for Lethal Weapon, Shane Black would eventually make his directorial debut with a different type of buddy cop film. I'm not a nice man, Harry. Go home before something bad happens to you. What, are you threatening me? No, moron. What? Go home before the bad guys do something okay, bad right. to you. The bad guys, right, I get it right, fine. Robert Downey Jr. plays a thief who's mistaken for a Hollywood actor and finds himself shadowing a private investigator played by Val Kilmer. With Christmas just a few days away, the two soon uncover a ghastly conspiracy involving some of LA's most powerful figures. First, you have to wrap the body. Okay. Second, you've got to find the gun. Say this with me. Find the gun. Find the gun. Find the gun. Oh, did I throw it in the lake? Not my gun, idiot. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang gleefully sends up many tropes of hard-boiled detective fiction with its self-aware style of humor and the deadpan performances of its two leads. I just, I put in one bullet, didn't I? I you put, put a live round in that gun. Oh yeah, there was like an 8% chance. Eight percent. Was it just 8? Eight? 8? Yeah. Who taught you math? math? more, I don't know. For this reason, it's a film that would work at any time of year, making its holiday setting all the more ingenious. <sighs> Merry Christmas. Number five, Trading Places. A team-up between two of the funniest guys in Hollywood? Sure sounds like Christmas to us. Take it, take it. Please don't kill me. I'm getting married. And I want your bag, man. Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy are at their absolute best in this satirical comedy in which two mismatched men unwittingly become pawns in a social experiment. One's a snobby stockbroker and the other a penniless drifter. Get him! He's getting away! There he is! That's him! Get him! But they're both in for a Christmas surprise when they find themselves inhabiting each other's lives. Trading Places reaffirmed Aykroyd's comedic power while effectively shooting Murphy to superstardom. Hey, hey, bubbles, man. Say, man, when I was growing up, we want jacuzzi, we had to fart in the tub. Their chemistry is so on point that even if the film didn't take place during the holidays, it'd still be worth watching for its hopeful message about looking out for others. Hello, security. Merry Christmas. Number four, Gremlins. Ready? One, two, three. Right, right, no, no. Right, right. Don't expose it to light. Don't get it wet. And do not, under any circumstances, feed it after midnight. These are the instructions Billy Peltzer fails to follow after receiving a fuzzy little mogwai named Gizmo for Christmas. Where did you get this? Oh, some little junk store in Chinatown. Can I pick him up, Dad? It's a good thing Santa checks his list twice. While Gizmo is the embodiment of nice, he soon multiplies into a naughty batch of belligerent monsters. While Gremlins is undeniably a classic, its holiday trappings can fool you as quickly as a mogwai can. It is one creepy ride. So creepy, in fact, that it helped usher in the PG-13 rating. But even if it's not exactly for the whole family, it's still a playful and subversive fairy tale with seasonal delights. And instead, they pulled out my father. He was dressed in a Santa Claus suit. He'd been climbing down the chimney on Christmas Eve, his arms loaded with presents. Number three, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Forgive me, Mr. Claus. I'm afraid I've made a terrible mess of your holiday. As we've seen from this list, The Nightmare Before Christmas was not the first film to appeal to both Halloween and Yuletide aficionados alike. But come on, is there another movie that blends the best of both holidays together so seamlessly? Happy Halloween! Merry Christmas! This stop-motion musical is set in the frightening world of Halloween Town, where Jack Skellington reigns as the respected Pumpkin King. In this town, we call home. Everyone hail to the pumpkin song. <laughs> Tired of his drab traditions, Jack sets out to reinvigorate his existence by kidnapping Santa Claus and taking over Christmas. Consider this a vacation, Sandy. A reward. It's your turn to take it easy. 
As the scheme unravels into chaos, it becomes even harder to determine which holiday the film is in favor of. That's fine by us because the animation and songs are stunning enough that picking a side is beside the point. You know, I think this Christmas thing is not as tricky as it seems. And why should they have all the fun? It should belong to anyone. Number two, Batman Returns. The Christmas season is never that simple when Tim Burton is involved. I don't care what the cynics may say, this is the Christmas season. It should be a time of healing. In fact, the director manages to hide a subtle critique of the holiday's commercialism within this second installment of his beloved Batman duology. Hi, Christmas. While Gotham City prepares for its yearly Christmas festivities, the vengeful duo of the Penguin and Catwoman have a plan to shake things up. Hey, stud. I thought we had something together. We do. Super heroics and villainy run afoul, but Batman Returns still tells a compelling story that upends the sense of community typically associated with Christmas. Selena, about that Christmas getaway we planned? I'll be going alone. Dr. Shaw says I need to be my own person and not an appendage. Like Oswald Cobblepot and Selena Kyle, Bruce Wayne is also alone for the holidays. A child who spent his first Christmas and many cents in a sewer. Then again, all three of them are brought together during the film's explosive finale. And isn't that what Christmas is all about? How about a kiss, Santa Claus? Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Catch me if you can, because they're always talking on Christmas. Merry Christmas! How is it that we're always talking on Christmas? Paul, oh, every Christmas, I'm talking to you! Put your shirt on, <laughs> Frank. You're under arrest. The Long Kiss Goodnight. If you've ever wondered how spies celebrate Christmas, this is the one for you. On the midnight kiss. Damn you, Sally. Long time. Iron Man 3. Shane Black does it again with this slice of holiday heroism. What are you waiting for? It's Christmas. Take him to church. Rocky 4. Nothing like a title fight for the holidays, right? I just want to say one thing to my kid who should be home sleeping. Merry Christmas, kid! You can see what you got to just stop. Fight it! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Die Hard Is there any Christmas music? This is Christmas music! Whoever said a movie set on Christmas Eve can't also have a tightly plotted story and heart-racing action? That is exactly what Die Hard provides, as Detective John McClane squares off against a skyscraper full of terrorists who have taken his wife hostage during a Christmas party. Uh, due to the Nakatomi Corporation's legacy of greed around the globe, they're about to be taught a lesson in the real use of power. Featuring breakout performances from Bruce Willis as McClane and Alan Rickman as the cunning Hans Gruber, the film has plenty of Christmassy touches sprinkled into the chaos. Who are you then? Just a fly in the ointment, Hans. The monkey in the wrench. A pain in the ass. Plus, McCain's entire goal is to spend the holidays with his family. It doesn't get much more festive than that. It's hard to think of a film that stirs up more chatter around Christmas time than this one. And to that, we say, well, you tell him, Bruce. And I am in charge of this situation. Oh, you're in charge? Well, I got some bad news for you, Dwayne. From up here, it doesn't look like you're in charge of jack shit. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.